All right, in this item, we're asked to use the portal method to estimate reactions and the corresponding MoMA diagram for the system. Right? And so we've been given here that a three bay frame, single story, all the frames are the same width and the same height. They also have what looks to be fairly robust connections to the foundation, and we're asked to treat those supports as fixed. Someone's already come along with a MoMA diagram, or sorry, a, actually a deflected shape, which tells me that I would predict that we're going to end up with a MoMA diagram that looks something somewhat like I'm drawing at the moment, pun intended, because we're drawing the MoMA diagram, and at the moment it looks like it might be like this. Yeah, funny, haha. -ha. Right, so I think it's going to look something like that. That would reflect a double curvature that we've got here in the columns and then the beams I think it's going to look something similar like so and there's more going on here than what I'm letting on but in terms of how I know that I actually am correct in all this mostly because I've done these so often I guess but I think that is a pretty good initial prediction that goes along with this uh, deflected shape here right now I wanted to do that because it's going to highlight a couple of things. One, we're going to make assumptions about these inflection points or zero moments. And I was pretty sloppy about how I was doing things here in terms of drawing the moment, the predicted moment diagram. Um, but what we've got here for the points of inflection for our assumptions, well, that's just terrible, isn't it? Are going to be points of inflections of columns at the mid-height and we will assume that the mid point of inflection of the beams is at its span. Certainly is what seems to be drawn here is something very much akin to that. Okay, so that's one of the assumptions and the next one is that the interior columns are twice as stiff as uh, exterior columns. Right? And what that's going to do for us is, is enable us to say that we think that the shear that develops at the base of these columns is going to be proportional to this relative stiffness, right? And so that would be V on the outside and 2V on the inside, right? So with that assumption, 100 kip applied load, then first step is let's find our columns here in the exterior and sum of forces in the X would mean that we would have 100 minus V minus 2V minus 2V minus V equals zero, so therefore that in our approximation here would say that V is equal to 100 divided by 6, and I believe that's probably 16.67, isn't it? Indeed it is. All right, so that gives us our shear value. Now we can find then our moment reactions by, now that's just at the, uh, of course, the exterior columns. Let's find the moment reactions MA and MG by taking advantage of then the little free body diagram that's going to develop here. This is the lower portion. Flexion point was in the midpoint, so that's 15 foot up. The column shear on the bottom was 16.67, and it will likewise be 16.67 at the top and then we'll have the moment. Now we haven't shown the axial force here, so I'll just put little stubs in there for now. And But there's our M. Let's, we'll do it at A. And so 16.67 times our 15 feet would be 250. So I think we just found most of our reactions. Not all of them, but uh, most of them. Because that has to be our moment that we just found. That's 250 kip foot, that was 16.67, that's going to be twice that, or 33.33, that 
one is 16.67. Our moment on that one will be 250 kip foot. Notice that we have twice this year, same height, so the moments on the middle ones will be double. So there's your 500 on each of those. So the only thing we're missing now for reactions are the vertical reactions. Remember that in the interior frame that we're going to have zero. Oh, so that's another assumption. It's actually borne out by the math, too. It's not really so much an assumption, but we have the interior columns have a net zero axial force. It's really a consequence of all the other things that are happening here. And so we need to figure out what the overturning effect is going to be on these two outer ones. And we would expect those to be the same magnitude because after all, there are only two uh, vertical components here. So let's find those. We're almost done. We're going to find those then by doing a little free by diagram for that joint B that goes right on top of this one, really. So there's your joint B. There's then 10 foot over to the inflection point, 15 foot down to the inflection point. Let's get the forces on there. We got the lateral load of 100. You've got the shear at the middle of B. You could call it B prime, I suppose. And then you've got the bending moment, which is zero there. And then we have the axial force that we seek, that's N. And we got the shear, 16.67. And if we sum moments, about B prime, then we have 16.67 times 15 feet minus our N times 10 foot. Notice this was convenient because that way we don't have to deal with the 100 kip load at all. Um, its effect has already been taken care of. And so N will just be then 16.67 times the 15 divided by 10, or 25. And there's a little rounding error in there. If we carried out more digits, we find out that that's exactly 25. So that gets all the reactions in there. So all that's left are finding the moments. Right? So we already have the value of the moments at the base of the column. That's 250, getting it to curve that way, which is exactly what's shown in the deflected shape. This is 500 here, 500 there, and 250 can deflect a shape like that. And then the symmetry of the situation means that will be 250 up at the top. We get 250 there, 250 at the top of the call. Oops, so that's 500, not 250, 500 there, 500 there. And on top of this column, we've got 250 comes around to the other side of the beam. That's 250. The symmetry means that has to be 250. That has to be 250. So on and so forth. But let's just check what's going on here. All right, those were by caused by the assumptions that we made here about the inflection points. Let's check the beam. Not sure if you can see all that, so let me sorry, move that up a little bit. And draw a free by diagram of a portion of the beam, let's say B to B prime. We know the end shear is 25. We know the end moment on the left is 250, right? And so that makes the shear at the middle then also 25, right? And then we go, that was what, 10 foot long. And then we've got then the other portion, right? That was to B prime. That was B. Now we go over to that middle joint D, and we have then that going downwards at 25. Again, 10 foot. We got to have a shear that's 25, and then a bending moment to counteract that 25 times 10. Oh, that's 250, just like we thought it would be, right? And so now let's look at that joint D. I haven't shown the axial forces here. They would be the net of leftover from the 100 minus the shear of 16.67, if you're curious. 
right, so let's reflect that around. That's 25. There's our 250. We've got 500 from the column. Right, so that makes then to get this all into equilibrium, we got to have another. That was clockwise. That's counter. So we got to have another counter at 250. And if the axial force is zero, then the shear force has to be 25. Right, and that's how we would be able to work around. We could come here and move, move our way in and verify that equilibrium of all those joints or coming upwards as well, verifying that what we found out to be the case down here all looks good. Right? So there's our moment diagram that goes with our portal method and there's the deflected shape that goes with that. Um, sort of made that clutter, cluttered somewhat so I could get it all on the same page for you.